Hey guys, welcome back to Salt and Pepper Gaming. Today we're going to have a look at our top 10 Nintendo 64 games of all time. Let's go. The Nintendo 64 was released in 1996. While it doesn't have as many games as a Super Nintendo, it was still quite tricky to pick 10 of our favorite Nintendo 64 games. Well, let's kick off Salt and Pepper's top 10 Nintendo 64 by coming in at number 10 with Wayne Grexley's 3D Hockey. The NHL and the NHLPA present Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. Yeah, I love how the 64 has a variety of types of games on the system. And the fact that you can play ice hockey on the 64 is pretty awesome. Uh, obviously, we grew up playing this game um, in Australia, obviously there's not much ice and snow in Australia, so <laughs> there's no to ice play hockey. a nice hockey game was pretty fun. This game was absolute fun. It has a, it's a fast-paced ice hockey game and it had everything you want in ice hockey, but much more. There's so many things to love about this game, from the audio commentary to the power shots, and even to the point you get into little fights within the game it were pretty awesome. This is the puck. Our fight is broken out. Yeah, that was fun. Like, it was over the top fight. Actually, sometimes you'd play it just to get into fights. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> See yeah. how many fights you get into. <laughs> Another thing we, we loved was having cheat codes. Um, so having big heads or small bodies or even ones where you could score from no matter where you were on the on the field. It was just a fun game. Wayne Grexy 3 Hockey is definitely on our top 10. And keeping with the theme of snow, of course, Snowboard Kids has to be in our top 10 at number 9. Now this was an absolutely crazy fun snowboarding games. Um, most people would liken this to Mario Kart, uh, but on the snow, and it was really cool. Yeah, I love that you can do jumps and flips while playing it, and pick up to five characters um, to play the game. And each each character had their own different abilities, uh, which was really cool. One was faster than the other. One, one mm. could do this. One could do that. What was fun was approaching the different ramps, getting ready to pull off a flip and earn some extra points. It's a visual, cartoony style Ready? arcade racer with insane jumps, Go! moves, characters, fun power-ups. Snowball Kids was definitely one wild ride. We loved it that this game was a little bit different to the norm when it comes to any like a first person shooter or a racing game on the Nintendo 64. And that's why it's our number nine for us. In number eight, we think deserves to be up there is WCW NWO Revenge. Possibly, I think, the best wrestling game ever to come out. Part of the reason why it's on our top, it's, it's top eight is because we grew up watching WCW on TV. So that's kind of part of a nostalgia, I guess, that got us to like this game even more. Uh, to even play the, the awesome characters of Sting, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, um, and play all the characters and do their um, specific moves in the game. I also love the fact that you could do taunts um, from the characters themselves, say for Sting, where he's known for going, Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but it was just awesome to be able to play a character that you loved watching in wrestling. And that's why it is our number eight. And at number seven is Wave Race 64. I haven't played too many jet ski games, but on the 64, this was the best water racing game. Wave Race 64 is a racing video game developed by Nintendo EAD and published by Nintendo. And it was released for the 64 in 1996, um, as it was a follow-up to the 1992 game, uh, Game Boy titled Wave Race itself. I loved how even in a 64 console, that in this game, the water changes depending on what time of the day it is. So what was really cool were the jump scenes, the fact that you can go left or right into the boys as the track itself was really cool. Yeah, I liked how you could do flips and you could dive into the water oh, and do cool. handstands on the jet ski. Yeah, Just made cool. it, the game pretty awesome for in that time, you know, a pretty unique kind of game. And that's why it's our number seven. Well, Rareware have made incredible games throughout its lifetime. And in 1998, we were very excited when they released Banjo and Kazooie, and it is our number six in our top 10. What a unique game this is for the Nintendo 64. And I love how you can play using either Banjo or Kazooie. It's got a very similar experience to Super Mario 64. But Banjo Kazooie brought um, a fun and different gameplay to a free world exploring game. Since its release, it's sold over 2 million copies in the US alone. Um, and it's just an awesome game overall, and so that's why it is at our number 6. 
and no Nintendo Top 10 list would be complete without Mario Kart 64 at number 5. Mario Kart 64 was absolutely incredible as it took the original Super Mario Kart um, on the SNES up to a 64-bit graphic game uh, 3D and it was one of the best Mario Karts I think to ever play. What was really cool about uh, Mario Kart 64 is that you were finally introduced to four-player gaming Mario Kart, which is yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, one of our favorite modes was Battle Mode. Um, you could spend hours playing Battle Mode just to trying to pop your three balloons. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong. It's <laughs> du -du 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 -du. at number four. <laughs> we have the all-time best Mario game ever, Super Mario 64. And this game was absolute. Can, before we talk about the game, it's interesting that Nintendo decided that every single game to come out on the 64 had to end with 64. <laughs> It's true, it's true. <laughs> but I guess if you look back now, it was probably one of the first open world games I remember playing on the 64. Yeah. Well, just so like how vast you could just, you have your little castle and then in that castle you go to each door and that's a, a level on its own. Yeah, it's awesome. It was actually, the, it's the first Mario to ever go 3D. So um, what a cool experience mm. from taking Mario from a 2D platform to a 3D exploration of absolute incredibleness. Fun. I love how different a lot of these levels are from being in a lava level, a water level, a desert level, even a ghost mansion. Some fun moments about this game, um, obviously the way that you can control the camera with your right mm -hmm. whatever stick and um, giving you the whole 3D aspects of Mario, the multiple jumps he could do. Well, here we are. We are at the top three of our list. And look, we struggled to come to an agreement on what the top three, mm. so we compromised and had it my way. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, no, then... I'm the older brother. <laughs> so coming in at number three, Lila Wars. Yes, we did review this game as an honorable mention for the Super NES. And of course, here it is, where it's finally perfected on the 64. It's like, it's Star Fox in all its glory. What I loved about this game was the voice acting. I loved how a game on the Nintendo 64 on a cute little cartridge can still have enough space in the game to store voice acting. It's about acting. time you showed up, Fox. You're the only hope for our world. I see him up ahead. Let's rock and roll. One of my favorite levels in the game is Katina, an open world type level where it was very similar to Independence Day. Eagle 20, Fox 2! where there's a, a big mothership arrives and everyone's trying to fight off all the little um, spaceships and then eventually obviously kill the mothership. Lila Wars was one of the first games on the 64 that actually enabled you to play with the rumble pack. You can't remember what that was, you plug it into the controller and every time you got hit, your controller shook. So it actually made you feel like you were getting hit. That was pretty cool. Well, that's why Lila Wars is sitting at our number three. And at number two, of course, we've got to pick GoldenEye 007. I uh, want one of the best first person shooters on the Nintendo 64. Uh, I'm going to say possibly ever. For the 64, I would say. Okay. <laughs> GoldenEye 007 is a 1997 first-person shooter developed by Rare and published by Nintendo for the 64. What I loved about this game was, even though the graf graphics were a little bit blocky, it was pretty cool to see real faces on the enemies um, as you play them. Um, we think it's possibly the best movie-to-game adaption ever. Uh, everything about the game makes it absolutely brilliant. I like the health bar and the armor bar, how it was a circular thing. The left was the health, the right was the armor. While there are no health item recoveries in the game, the body armor was able to be acquired, which is really cool. God and I also brought stealth in first player shooters, mm. which you didn't have before, uh, which is really cool. You could hide behind things and stuff like that. Yeah, and sometimes if you weren't so stealthy and you had to use a normal gun, 
Yeah. Everyone heard it and everyone <laughs> was trying to kill you. Yeah, that was, um, that was cool. Even things like changing the difficulty and seeing if you could survive at the hardest difficulty um, when you're playing the campaign. Just the overall game itself. There's just so many reasons why it was such an awesome game for this Nintendo 64. And before we get to number one, we've got an honorable mention of Perfect Dark. Well, it's almost like a a sequel to GoldenEye, or the next version of GoldenEye. It was a pretty awesome game. Uh, the graphics were pretty stunning for a Nintendo 64 game, yep. and that's why it's an honorable mention here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nintendo fans, children, anyone watching, we are at our number one of our top 10 Nintendo 64. Can I get a drum roll, please? Yep, and two rock. Now I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not too rock. But actually, it should have been on our top 10. This is where we disagree. But our number <laughs> one game of all time is... Zelda Ocarina of Times. So cringy when you do that. Zelda Ocarina of Time. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alright, let's do it again. Can't. Cut. Number one for Nintendo 64 is definitely Zelda Ocarina of Time. Of course this has got to be number one. It if is. it hasn't made the top ten yet, it's here at number one. Number one. We think it is It is the best Zelda game ever to be released uh, for so many reasons. And this game was absolutely wild on the 64. It blew our minds and we were completely hooked yeah, to this game. Being the first, obviously, 3D Zelda. We love Zelda. I love Zelda, as you can tell on our wall. Absolutely huge Zelda fans. So we're excited to talk about this on the 64. Starting in Kariko Forest, with the fairy saying its iconic, Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and the music lets you feel like you were at the beginning of an awesome adventure. A main part of this game is when you play as young Link, and then throughout the game you play, you turn into old Link after you've acquired the Master Sword. Um, just and then the interchange. Once you've put the sword back, you can go back to the young Link. What we loved about it is the fact that you can go on horses, ride around, which is really cool. Mm. Um, just the way you interact with the enemies in the uh, you know open world map was which was unreal. Loads of fun. The music, the score behind this game was 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 awesome. The day and night kind of element on this game. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we've also got a Super Nintendo Top 10, so check that out as well. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace.